From the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel, with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Francis Salesiar. The televising of this Mass is made possible with the contributions from three donors. The first is the estate of Ms. Elaine Marie Glossop of Ontario, in memory of Elaine, her brother Alfred Jones, and her friend Rodney Herbert Crown. The second are the members of the St. Mary's Catholic Women's League in Tilsonburg, Ontario, in support of the Daily TV Mass. The third is an anonymous donor from Lakeland, Florida, for her personal intentions. Our sincere thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we come together, today we celebrate the memorial feast of St. Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. As we come to celebrate their feast, we are called to celebrate their friendship with the Lord and their proclamation of faith. So we are challenged and we are invited to ask ourselves, do we place our trust in God? Do we place our trust in the resurrection of the life? Let us ask God's pardon and mercy for the moments where we have failed. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Maria Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, whose son was pleased to be welcomed in St. Martha's house as a guest, grant we pray that through her intercession, serving Christ faithfully in our brothers and sisters, we may merit to receive by you in the halls of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses went down from the top of Mount Sinai and came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the ordinances. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up 12 pillars corresponding to the 12 tribes of Israel. He sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed oxen as communion offerings to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in the basins, and half of the blood he dashed against the altar. Then he took the Book of the Covenant and read it in the hearing of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. Moses took the blood and dashed it on the people and said, See the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you, in accordance with all these words. The word of the Lord. Offer to God a sacrifice. 
sacrifice of praise. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. There is a story told of a family that moved into a new community. They were promptly visited by two church leaders and the pastor of the nearby church, who cordially invited them to attend the Sunday services. The man assured them that he would come just as soon as he got straightened out. Several months passed, and he still hadn't put in an appearance, so the minister called again and repeated his invitation, how happy he is to have them in their congregation and to welcome him to the church. But he received the same reply. The fellow hadn't yet gotten everything 
straightened out. A few weeks later, unfortunately, he died suddenly, and his widow asked to have the funeral service in the church. The pastor graciously agreed. It was indeed a sad affair. Later, when a member of the congregation asked the pastor if the man was a Christian, he answered, he never attended service here, and no one can recall ever hearing him talk about Christ. So I really can't say. I only know that he was a man of his word. He promised to come to church just as soon as he got straightened out, and he did. He was brought to church, straightened out. Death is a sorrowful event we all have experienced in our lives. It invades our homes and brings with it division, discouragement, disillusionment, and defeat. When someone who, whom we love dies, we are in a way put through difficult moments. At the same time, we all know that death is a universal event. No matter who you are, rich or poor, Indian or Canadian, healthy or unhealthy, we will experience the reality of death one day. So the gospel that we heard is not one of surprise. But at the same time, even though we know the certainty of dying, oftentimes it catches us off guard. When you take time to understand the story that is being built up, it is not just merely about death and loss, but it's more about the life to come. It is more about the power of God. The chapter 11, John builds the story masterfully to one of Jesus' pinnacle signs to reveal Jesus as the promised Messiah, to reveal that he has the power over death, to reveal that he can give life to the dead. Verses 1 to 6 of chapter 11 introduce us to the significant relationship that Jesus had with the family of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. These verses also introduce us to Lazarus' serious illness and Jesus' delay in coming back and Lazarus' subsequent death. The story then slows down significantly, building up with anticipation toward Jesus' miraculous raising of Lazarus from the dead. We learn in Jesus' question to Martha in verse 26, as we heard in today's gospel, that this sign was for a specific purpose, namely to display the glory of the Son of God, removing any doubt that Jesus is the Messiah and resulting in belief. Martha grieved as well as we all do with the loss of loved one. This grief is rooted in the pain of separation from the family or friend who died. Her grief is real. But the promise that Jesus gives to Martha, that is, those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, is also real. By using the natural event of death, Jesus invites Martha and us to go beyond the here and now. Not just to focus on the death, but the life that is to come. That's why Jesus says, those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. In fact, Jesus emphasizes the essential nature of belief three times in verses 25 and 26, concluding with the central question of the text to Martha, do you believe? Interestingly, the question Jesus asked Martha is a question that we, each one of us, are asked. I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe? Do we believe that God can give us this hope no matter of our circumstances? Do we believe that Jesus can give us life, even if it looks like this earthly life isn't worth it? 
Do we believe that God is good even if life isn't so good right now? We are challenged through the feast of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus to go beyond here and now this earthly life. Quite often, we are caught up in the immediate. We are not able to go and look beyond. And that's what we see and heard in the words of Martha. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Quite often, we hear this anxious tone among a lot of people. But the, the assurance is given to each of us. All those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. We are called to that belief that our earthly life may disappear. We may die to this world, but we live forever in the Lord. Let us bring forth our prayers and petitions. We are going to pray for ourselves that we may strengthen our faith, that we may strengthen our trust, particularly in moments when we go through loss and suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We're going to pray for our family and friends who are put through life difficulties, where they are like Martha, crying out to God, Lord, if you had been here, this would not have happened, that they may continue to see beyond the here and now. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We're going to pray for the sick and suffering, those who go through difficulties in life due to financial problem, relationship issues in their work and place of employment, that they may continue to know the goodness and the everlasting love and life that God gives us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us take a moment of silence to bring to God our own prayers and petitions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring before you all these prayers, knowing and trusting you always listen to us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. As we proclaim your wonders in St. Martha, O Lord, we humbly implore your majesty that as her homage of love was pleasing to you, so to our dutiful service may find favor in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us your signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim.
Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spreads throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the holy reception of the body and blood of your only begotten Son, O Lord, turn us away from the cares of this fallen world, so that following the example of St. Martha, we may grow in sincere love for you on earth and rejoice to behold you for eternity in heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace to love and serve one another. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.